down. Stay inside buildings and await further instructions. Hey guys, this is going to be a quick update video on the generator controller. So I've only done a couple of things. Um, I was quite happy with the end result so far. I've added a battery charge indicator. So you can see how charged the generator battery is. Now, obviously it has a battery charger built into here. So in order to test the battery volts, you need to turn the charger off. So now you just push that and it disconnects the charger. And you should be able to see it drop down soon. It should go down to like 13.9. Uh, there we go. And that will slowly trickle down to about 13.6 and it will hold stable. And then if I turn that back on, back up to 14 volts. Now to start the weekly test, you have to hold the button down for five seconds to start the actual uh, proper test. Okay, and apart from that, the only other change I've made is programming. So I've completely restructured the ladder logic, made it a bit more tidy. Um, as I was testing it through the weeks, I noticed quite a few bugs in the programming. It's hard to avoid bugs when you're using a lot of timers and counters and it's uh, there's so many different ways to program it so I've really tried to structure this new program uh, very tidily. If you're interested on a programming video let me know and I might actually make a tutorial on how to program simple PLCs. I've got another one coming from China soon so it could be a, an interesting subject. Anyway while we're here let's do a manual uh, test of the generator. So it's already on hand mode we'll start the generator. This is the first test since I've reprogrammed it. Okay, everything seems to be holding stable. Now we will transfer to the generator once this grid is stabilized a little bit. Okay, looks like the voltage is stabilized, so we'll do a transfer. And there we go. You can see once the uh, generator has load on it, the hertz go down to about 50. Um, but when there's no load on the generator, it's a little bit high, runs at about 52 hertz. Not a biggie, but just something I observed. Okay, now let's turn off the grid. And that's pretty good. You can see our battery's down to 13. Uh, but now that the generator's started, that's rapidly gonna go up until it goes into some sort of overload. I don't know why the generator charges the battery so much. I can't, I wouldn't say that it's good for it. Uh, it gets up to about 13.6. As you know, it gets up to 14.6, early 15 volts. So it's, uh, it's quite high. You can see it's rapidly going up. Crazy. Okay, I'm going to have a look at the logic here, make sure we've got no timers running because in this mode there should be no timers whatsoever. Perfect, no timers running, which means it's not gonna try not gonna try uh, switch over to the grid when the grid's turned off. So the, the bug that I found the other day, it was quite funny. I was doing a load test, um, I turned off the grid and then all of a sudden the generator controller tried to change over to the grid even though the grid wasn't turned on. And uh, obviously that resulted in uh, a quick power outage, which is not what I want. I'm trying to avoid having outages, not create them with the controller. So at that moment I just decided, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna redo the entire, uh, entire setup. Okay, as you can see the uh, voltage here is way too high it's like 15.5 seems to have stabilized now but yeah not good uh, might need to put a regulator on it i might talk to the manufacturer of the generator and, and find out why that uh why it charges that high because it's definitely not good for the battery okay let's go outside and have a look at the generator generator shed light on
test is completed. Um, I've already transferred it back to the grid and now I'm gonna shut off the generator. So, shut it off. Again, it takes a little while because it has to uh, make sure that the grid's stable before the generator turns off. And there we go. It waits another 10 seconds before it turns off the bypass relay. Um, because what would happen is if the generator tries to transfer over or the bypass switch, the bypass relay turns off, when the generator is shutting off, then it puts it on the grid and then the grid would experience that, uh, that surge. Okay. So, I've learned a little bit from this test. There's a few more things that I want to do um, inside the controller just to make it a bit more idiot proof. Uh, one of those being, I don't want to be able to transfer it to this side when the grid is turned off. So if the grid is turned off manually on this side, I do not want to be able to push that button. Because what that does is if there's no grid power there, it will disconnect from the generator and boom, you've lost power. Um, still need to add the buzzers to the fault LEDs. Uh, I want to find some really cool sounding buzzers, you know, like the ones you find in power stations. So that'd be pretty cool, kind of the cherry on top sort of thing. Um, I want to get custom labels made for these, so nice uh, engraved labels for these would be pretty cool. And apart from that, I think I'm really happy with the, the final result. I've ordered a surge protector for the, uh, the output, so if there's a, a lightning strike or something, it would surge protect it, or if the generator went, um, you know, did something crazy, it should protect it. Also, I don't know if this product exists, but I want to find like a over frequency, over voltage protection unit. So if something happens to the generator and it, it, the voltage gets too high, it will automatically disconnect the generator and save the electronic equipment. Or if the frequency gets out of the range, so say if it gets above 55 hertz, um, it does the same thing where it cuts off the generator. Because I'd rather lose power to my equipment uh, than have it damaged. Generators are pretty good. But they can fail, you know, they, they are prone to, prone to failure. Um, I don't know if over voltage is a problem, I don't know how that would occur, but maybe if the AVR and the generator failed, it, it, it is a possibility that that could occur. So just pretty much safety is the only thing I have in mind for improving this. Design wise, I'm really happy with it, um, <clears throat> but it could have a lot of safety features added. But again, only I should be operating this or maybe I'll make up a manual for it, but I would be the only one that operates it. Um, my workers asked me to make one of these as well for their, for their monitoring station, just so they can have an automatic transfer switch uh, functionality like this. So I'd probably take a lot of the things that I've learned from this and implement it in that. Uh, one of the key things being safety. I think the over voltage, over frequency protection is a really good asset. Um, also under voltage and under frequency protection as well. There must be a product out there. Um, nearly every time I think of an idea and then I look it up online, it's, it's something's been made for it or there's a product out there that exists for it. Um, yeah, so enough blabbing on. I think that's gonna conclude this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. I'll try and make some fire alarm videos soon. Goodbye.